Good afternoon, or as you say, good evening, everyone. Welcome to APU Industry Career Live Webinar Session. My name is Colin from Asia Pacific University of Technology and Innovation, and I'm a host for this session. Today is our third day of the webinars, and also this will be the last session of the day. For those who have missed out our previous session, please feel free to visit our YouTube channel to watch a replay. And also, we cover in the field of AI, big data, cybersecurity, engineering, psychology, digital marketing, fintech, and many more topics. While waiting for more people to join our live session today, I would like to invite you to come and join our APUE Open Day. Our counselors are ready to guide you through the further pathway available for your further study after your SPM or IGCSE or even UEC. For more information and update, please do visit to our website, www.apu.edu.my, and also follow our Facebook page. So today we are proud to have Mr. Desmond Lee, who is the CEO and co-founder of the App Explorer, I Can This Remember Hard, and also Dr. Ken, who is from our School of Computing, and also she's a senior lecturer, again with us to tell us more on the career of game design and development. So welcome Mr. Desmond and also Dr. Ken. Good evening, everyone. Hi, how are you all? Uh, good evening. Uh, my name is Ken. Okay. Today with me uh, is a one un, in a wonderful evening. Uh, with me is uh, Mr. Desmond. Desmond is uh, currently a CEO of the App Explore Eye Candy Sandiram Berhad and the COO of Eye Candy Interactive. He holds a Bachelor of Fine Arts, Computer Arts from Academy of Arts, University San Francisco. He has over five years international experience in USA. In 2014, he was appointed by Multimedia Development Corporation, which is also called MDAC, as a consultant to assist Saladin special project and later become the producer of Saladin, the animated series, and was nominated for the International Emmy Awards in 2011, uh, which is the Malaysia first Emmy Award nomination. His ultimate goal is to drive the company to become a world-class mobile game studio in Malaysia. 
Ladies and gentlemen, today Mr. Desmond will give a webinar talk with the topic of career in game design and development. So Mr. Desmond, the floor is yours, please. Thank you, thank you. Uh, first thing first, uh, happy Father Day. Uh, so uh, my name is Desmond. I'm the uh, co-founder co of App Explore and also the CEO of App Explore. So I, uh, let, let me uh, share the slide. Can you all see the slide? Yes. Okay, all right. So uh, today's topic uh, is career in game design and development. So I actually have the uh, tagline called Beyond and Development. So the reason why is uh, actually the uh, gaming or the career in game design and development is beyond just development and game design, right? So, um, and today agenda, I'm gonna walk you through uh, a bit uh, about us, introduction about uh, App Explore and then also the uh, development pipeline uh, that we have, and then uh, followed by the gaming industries uh, in Malaysia and also the world. Okay, so uh, about us, uh, so basically we founded in 2011, we just formed and team, and currently we have about 40 plus staff. Uh, we focus on uh, our own IP and also freemium mobile games. Uh, so some of you might not, uh, know the some of the terms uh, like IP, IA and all that, which is okay. Uh, so free, just a quickly freemium mobile game, basically where you can download the game for free and then you can play for free. Then there are in-app purchase, which is called IAP and also in-app apps, so uh, it's called IAA. Um, then we got acquired uh, in 2015 um, by a public listed uh, company. And then later we listed in uh, Australia uh, under uh, a company called iCandy Interactive. So far, we have developed 12 games and we over, uh, with over uh, 40 million downloads. And we were also awarded uh, as top developer by Google Play. Uh, so uh, this year, we actually 10 year anniversary. Uh, so we co-founded in, uh, in 2011. So these are some of the uh, photos just uh, sharing. So uh, here we have four people. That's how we started. And then um, then over the year, we grow, uh, uh, let's say today we have about 40 uh, plus people. And so these are some of the games that we have developed. Um, so we have Lightpus, uh, which we developed in 2012, uh, 2011, 2012. Uh, and then the latest one would be uh, Close Down, uh, which will be released uh, in a week time. Okay, just showing some of the games uh, banner that we have. Uh, so we have Edenheim, Morfish Hunters, and Crab Wars, uh, Light Ways, uh, Musketeer, Close Down. So Musketeer, uh, we released the game last year. So this year, uh, our game title, uh, our new game is uh, closed down. Like I say, uh, will be released in about week plus. Okay, um, the topics uh, basically uh, on the game development pipeline. Uh, so, uh, so these are the the uh, pipeline market research on trending mobile game. So that's how we started uh, on the uh, how we're going to start the develop a new game. And then, of course, uh, we need to uh, know what are the targets. Uh, so we um, target development duration, usually uh, 12 to 16 months. And then we shortlist and finance the game genre and gameplay. Then we move on to the game design, and then we do prototype, and then uh, move on to alpha, beta, and some iterations. And then, of course, we have uh, server uh, design, server architect design. Uh, so that's uh, the game backend. And then, of course, a team and concept design followed by uh, sound music and then uh, integration means, uh, you know, after game done, then you need to do a lot of like uh, analytics and social login, um, like the game you play today, you know, you need prop uh, some game require you to log in uh, using Facebook and Google and, and whatnot. Okay, uh, so when we start, um, we basically do some research on what are the trending mobile games. Uh, uh, we try to look at the, the most downloaded games uh, in the world, and then also the top grossing. Um, so these are uh, data provided by Sensor Tower. So these are the games that actually make the most revenue uh, on the top 10. Uh, so that's how we started, uh, basically uh, to make sure that we, we 
develop the games that you know most people like to play. Um, and move on to game design. Uh, so the game design part, uh, it can uh, be very simple, as simple as this one, basically like the old time classic game where you put in coin and then you start game, you, you play, and then you, you, know, you hit high score, and then that's a loop, right? So very simple. Uh, all as complex as this one. So this is a game design that we have uh, for Crosstar. Um, very complex. So there's a whole game design ecosystem in there. Uh, so uh, basically, when people download the game for free, they play the games and um, they can uh, advance to next level and then become difficult. Then they need to upgrade uh, their weapons and whatnot. And then uh, that's where the whole game economy uh, come in. So uh, they will spend their uh, currency, and then they will buy, continue to buy to upgrade and all that. Uh, showing here some of the concept art. Uh, so that's how we started. Uh, if you look at the first uh, slide, I mean the first uh, 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 graphics, uh, it's very simple. That's basically the uh, concept that we have. And then a lot of iterations uh, uh, from different artists and style uh, developments and then uh, more graphic uh, concept art design. So we get a lot of reference from internet and uh, all others, uh, color uh, team and all that. Uh, more concept design and uh, character design. And also uh, UI UX design. So this is um, the part where all the uh, menus come in place and how you actually bring the uh, whole game user experience to the player. So when they come in, uh, what do you expect them to click and how do they actually navigate to the games, which is uh, very important. And then uh, more uh, concept design. So this is one of the close uh, our latest game uh, logo. So this is the final design. So when we have all that done, uh, so uh, we put all together. So this is basically the final design that we have. OK, so once we have the game, um, when I say beyond uh, game development, uh, because when you have the game, you only basically have the products, right? So you need to do a lot of other things uh, like release the game, market the game. So what we do uh, usually, so we have the uh, internal close beta. Uh, for about uh, one to two months. When we have done the game, we develop, uh, uh, I mean, we, we test the game for about one to two months. Internal, closed beta means uh, only our uh, developers can test the game. Uh, next phase basically is uh, early access on Google Play. So we release a game on early access uh, Google Play, about two to three months. Uh, we have control on which country you want to release first and then limit to how many player. Uh, so let's say we, we usually uh, limit to like 10,000 player. And uh, the moment you hit 10,000, nobody can download the game. So uh, with the early access uh, stage, where we can actually um, uh, test the game performance and then tweak the game and then uh, get feedback from the players and improve the games. Um, then uh, during, the during that period, uh, we actually will kickstart our marketing already. Right? So we will create um, like social media. We start creating uh, awareness and all that. And uh, next phase will be a pre register in Google Play and App Store. So what happened is um, one pre uh, earliest is done, we will uh, finalize the game, and then we put on Google Play and uh, do a pre register it means um, nobody can download the game, but if you're interested, you can pre register. And then followed by global release, of course, and then localizations. Uh, typically, our games are localized in three to 12 languages. Uh, so like Chinese, uh, Japanese, Korea, and other uh, many other languages. Okay, uh, on the marketing side, uh, so you when during the early access fee, uh, stage, we actually pitch the game to Google Play, right? So we show the game to uh, Google Play and App Store, and uh, uh, actually, um, if they like the game, uh, likely they will feature the game on uh, on App Store or Google Play Store. Um, so like it mentions, so we will create a social channel, we create Discord, Facebook, Reddit, and website. And then during the pre-registration stage, we also pitch the game to Google. Uh, 
if you notice, uh, when I say uh, feature means when you go to Google Play Store and uh, App Store, on the home page, that's where you see all the banners and icon. So uh, that's why I mean feature. So the game will be highlighted on the front page. And then we start uh, creating a peer registration marketing campaign. And then again, during global release, we pitch to Google again. Uh, uh, likely, hopefully, they will uh, feature the games. And then we do a cross promotion campaign uh, using our in house tools. And then we do press releases. And then we pitch the games to uh, journalists for review. And then we start a uh, user acquisitions campaign. So we use uh, Facebook for marketing. Um, um, when I say user acquisition, means we acquire user. We pay uh, advertisements on Facebook, uh, app map, and then um, get people to install the games. Okay, um, so pre registration uh, strategy that we use, uh, basically we offer them, um, if you're interested in the game, you pre-register and then you could, you will get some reward when the game is released. When you install, you will get the rewards. And these are some of the uh, tools that we use. Um, uh, A-B testing is very common. Um, uh, we use the system or tool to actually test which are the creative uh, generate the most click. So meaning if we have the highest percentage on uh, this art asset, then we will use it for uh, UA. And once you release a game, and uh, if you search your game, for example, one of Game Musketeer, and you should be able to see, you know, all the news that you created, all the marketing that effort that you put up is actually show up on the homepage, then um, mean your game is actually uh, creating a lot of awareness. So these are some examples that uh, our game is features uh, on App Store and Google Play Store. So uh, Musketeer, is, and then we have some game like popular game in Malaysia and then a uh, game from South Asia. So these are two of our game, Crab Ball and Light Away. And last but not least, uh, of course, when you have double game, you have released, published the game, uh, that's not the end. Um, so we also have support, right? Uh, we provide email support using Zendesk uh, and then we have to communicate with players across all social media uh, channels. And then we have to respond to player comment uh, from Google Play and App Store uh, using Zendesk. Uh, basically, it's very important to communicate with your player. Uh, player will make all kind of comment, right? So they will reach out to you on Facebook. So you have to be there to answer. If not, uh, they will like, oh, this game double, like not responding. And then, uh, and especially on the comment from uh, Google Play, uh, people will just make any comment, right? If the game just doesn't run on their device, uh, uh, remember there are like millions of devices out there, uh, brand, different brands. And um, if their game doesn't run on their device, they will just give you one star rating. And um, yeah, I mean, we just have to be very responsive on that. Um, to maintain the game rating above 4.0. It's very important for us because uh, anything below that, uh, it's very difficult for you to pitch to Google and App Store to get the game features. Okay, uh, so that basically uh, development and then how we release the game and then how we support the game, right? So um, the last few slides will be uh, focusing on uh, gaming industry. Um, so this basically the whole uh, very simple, just one, one slide to show you uh, how big the gaming industry is today, right? So if you look at box office, box office means you know, the, the video industry, uh, movie industry, and music industry, they are like 20 billion and 42 billion. Uh, and then uh, if you look at gaming, they are 145 billion. So far is the uh, biggest uh, entertainment industry. And also look at, uh, give you guys an idea on the top grossing games. Um, I bet no one have an idea how much actually the top game are making today, all right? So um, if you look at the data here, uh, a bit small, I hope you can see it. Um, this is data I get from, uh, from a website. Um, so this is basically showing top grossing games on iPhone right, in United States, just one country, United States alone. 
And if you look at the data here, it's July, uh, June 20, so basically it's today or yesterday. Uh, um, so they actually uh, estimations. And by day means one day, right? So if you look at one day, roadblocks, they are generating 3 million USD per day, right? That's how much money they are making per day, all right? So uh, Call of Duty and Candy Crush, I'm sure most people would know Candy Crush. Uh, from King Studios. So this is how much they are making per day. 2 million USD per day in US alone. All right. So that's not inclusive of uh, other country and also not inclusive of the Android mobile phone. Right. So only iPhone uh, in United States per day they are making 2 million. And if you look at the data, um, so you, you at least have an idea how much these are the top game are making. Um, next slide, basically, um, if you want to find out more about um, the gaming scene or gaming industry uh, in Malaysia, uh, you can visit lewap.my, L-E-V-E-L-U-P dot M-Y. So it's an initiative by government. Um, they actually uh, support the gaming industry, and uh, you can find a lot of information from the lewap.my. Uh, so they organize, like, um, game event, uh, competition, they give up uh, incentive, uh, grants uh, for game development and whatnot. Um, so you can find a lot of information there. Uh, and just to give you a bit about uh, the gaming studio in Malaysia. So these are the, some of the big studio in Malaysia. Uh, they provide service, uh, meaning they will develops art except for games. So if you look at it, the uh, Lemon Sky, uh, one of the biggest one. Uh, so they have about, I believe uh, today, they have like more than 300 uh, employee. So some of the game they have, the asset they have developed is Spider-Man, uh, Guild Wars and Street Fighters. Uh, Street Fighter, I believe from other studios. Okay, so, and move on. Uh, so we have some indie, uh, including us. Uh, some smaller uh, developers. So we have like Richie, uh, uh, Magnus, Metronomics, Titans. So these are the studios that are in Malaysia. And of course, we have some international studios uh, like Codemaster, Streamline Studios, Bandai Lamco, uh, uh, Double Eleven, Sony, and Larian Studio. So these are the international studio they have where they have like uh, HQ in uh, OOC, like uh, Pandana from Japan, Kromasa from uh, I believe from England. So they have studio here and um, they have uh, hired a lot of uh, artists to develop a lot of art assets and also the uh, game developments. And in terms of job opportunity, um, so you have to really think about um, when I when um, when I say beyond game development is because there are a lot more, right? So not just game development, not just programmer, not just artists, right? So we have, uh, if you look at management, uh, this is basically uh, what the role that we have in our company. So we have uh, executive producer, so we have producer, we have product managers, and on the uh, um, developments, of course, we have writers, game designer, art directors, level designer, UI, UX designer, 2D, 3D artists, animators, game programmer, server programmers, and then of course, uh, support marketing is important, very important. So, uh, so we have marketing uh, managers, social medias, uh, user acquisition specialists, QA support, and game tester. So we also have game tester to test games, um, um, because uh, all the version that we release, we want to make sure is no bugs. You know, so we have game testers to actually help us test the games and give a lot of bug report and and whatnot. And uh, my last slide, basically, if you want to have a full list, all right, so the one that I show here is not the full list because uh, if you look at the biggest studio like uh, Lemon Sky and others, uh, Sony and all that, they have a lot more uh, positions um, because they are just bigger. Uh, when you have a, a big uh, project, you need more people and more responsibility. So uh, here um, you can download. Um, it, this actually uh, provided by uh, Rick Davison. I actually just found this one uh, from internet. So you can actually scan this uh, QR code or uh, get the uh, link here and you can download this uh, list 
uh, uh, basically video game development team roles. So I uh, have a lot of uh, detail in, in that uh, PDF file and list out all the positions, possible positions in gaming industry. So uh, last but not least, just want to give you a quick uh, uh, introduction about iCandy Interactive. Um, so iCandy Limited, uh, um, iCandy Interactive basically is an investment company that we invest in uh, game uh, studios. So currently we have studio in Malaysia, like App Expo, so invested by iCandy. And we have a studio, uh, instant studio in Singapore, and also we have uh, another studio in uh, Indonesia. Okay, that, that pretty much uh, sum up my uh, presentations. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Desmond. Uh, uh, I actually have uh, one or two questions uh, regarding to the career uh, from the graduate. But before that, uh, does your company accept interns? Uh, yes, we do. We do. We do accept interns. Yeah. Normally, uh, the, the minimum requirement uh, as an intern is uh, roughly like 12 weeks. So if the interns actually work in uh, your company, uh, what is your recommended I would say because uh, sometimes uh, we, we may not actually need to uh, not only fulfill the minimum requirement, which is a 12 weeks, because 12 weeks, to be honest, uh, most likely uh, the first month, they only get to know maybe the, the company environment. Second month, get to know people in, in a little bit more. Then the third month, they start to learn the skill again. Okay? And maybe not yet complete any kinds of the big project from the company so just one just curious to ask uh, is there any recommended uh, time period from i mean from your company experience uh, how mm -hmm. long is a uh, kind of like a good uh, i mean a duration for the interns to actually get to know the the skill so that they can actually work in the industry Okay, uh, I, I guess um, I think typically now uh, for most of the uh, college or university, the, they provide three months. So yeah. I think that's pretty standard. I think so far three months is, uh, is okay for us. It worked out for us very well. Uh, but again, uh, it's also vary from uh, company to company. Uh, so there are small company into studio that uh, hire intern, you know, uh, into studio uh, like five people, 10 people, they hire interns. Um, their role responsibility and time frame very different and uh, versus us and also bigger studio you know so for us uh, we we when we hire interns uh, I think three months so far okay uh, um, the the challenge for us right we don't actually put the uh, intern into the the project okay of course, we are not asking them to clean table and all that okay <laughs> but uh, we we basically assign them to test game uh to test uh, the game that we we develop and about to release so they have to uh, test the game and give a, a report on the game uh, because we really want to make sure that they actually understand you know the game first before they can do anything and also for us because we do not have like a side project right so for most uh like smaller company they maybe have a, a smaller game you know like oh you know i'm going to develop this game in six months you know or three months so small hyper casual game, uh, which can be developed in six months, uh, which is uh, they will just like, okay, why don't you, you know, hire intern and then let's test, let's try this game, that game, you know. But for us, because we, we only like develop one to two games per year, uh, so our game is very big and involve like twenty man team and a very experienced programmer and designer, so we can afford to put in an intern in the pipeline or system, right? So we usually assign them to test game first. Uh, so three months uh, enough for them to actually get to know uh, how we develop games, how we test game, and then how uh, um, we work in the system or in the company. So that will give them an idea. Uh, then later, after they finish the intern, then they can you know decide you know whether they actually still interested in the game right after like you know. Uh, come uh, testing the game for three months 
right? If they're really passionate, you know, they don't mind testing the same game again, 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 right? So we, we really want to test the, their, their passionate, whether they're passionate about gaming industry, uh, because it's, uh, it's very important for uh, the individuals or interns or whoever want to uh, join us or any game uh, studio, they need to be very passionate about game. Otherwise, you know, you'll be like come in and like just treat this for a job. Yeah. Okay. Uh, apart from the internship, uh, if let's say uh, the graduate would like to apply for the position, okay, uh, in the games uh, development company, um, just curious to know what what is the minimum requirement that uh, your company maybe generally speaking. Uh, mm -hmm. What are the skills that uh, is essential so they can then kickstart in the industry? Uh, again, if you look at the list that I have, you know, uh, a lot of different roles, right? Okay. Uh, so it all depends. Uh, so, um, for, for example, if programmer, of course, uh, if you can show the, the skill that you have, the skill set that you have, uh, uh, especially in, you know, especially the engine, the game engine that we're using is Unity. And again, it all vary from company to company, right? Some they use Unreal, so uh, that would be a, a, a plus for them. But uh, we typically, we're looking for someone that uh, actually experience in Unity and uh, yeah, uh, programming. And then of course, uh, a lot of logic and all that. So we, when they join us programmer, we will give them a test. Uh, it's not just about programming tests, it's about uh, the, the logic and uh, a lot of other things. Yeah, so that's for programming. And artist find is very simple. Uh, we we don't even look at their cert, right? We don't bother where they come from. So when they join, uh, they uh, I mean when they come for interview, we just look at the portfolio. So you need to show uh, you know the the art as uh, art work that you you created you know uh, to uh, to prove that you can actually you know develop or create art. So. Uh, for game design, this is very tricky, right? Game design is, is especially when you just come up from the college, right? And you only have like a few, uh, a few like game design project from the college or from university and uh, from the school project. So that is very difficult to showcase your capability, right? So uh, I we actually expect those, uh, if possible, besides school project, you know, uh, they can develop their own uh, pet project, right? A small game or any other game uh, beside the school project, develop smaller game, try to publish on Google Play because Google Play is very easy to publish, right? So you create a, 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 a developer account on Google Play, is only pay $25 and then uh, try to develop a game. Hypercacher is fine, you know, just release it there and see the result and try. I mean, we, we like people to, uh, like candidate to try a lot of different things. Uh, so that will give us a more advantage over like just typical student, you know, finish project and then come and show to us, right? So yeah, so that's that's the angle we look at. Okay. Uh, apart from the technical skill, lah, what about uh, do those who have, uh, let's say, uh, not in the games development uh, area, for example, writer. So mm -hmm. maybe they don't actually uh, study computer games degree or diploma. Uh, uh, so how how your company actually identify talent from, from this aspect? Uh, for us, a big difference. Uh, when I say writer, uh, usually uh, it's the same role as game designer, right? Because with game design, they'll come with the game design and then in their mind, they already have the whole yeah. storytelling, right? So uh, we don't actually hire a, a writer uh, per se, uh, but some company they do, uh, especially those, uh, if the company develop games, uh, have a storytelling, then they might need a, a full-time writer. So for us, we develop a lot of casual games and we don't really need like full-time writer, but uh, usually like say a uh, game designer, they come up with the whole story uh, arts and then the uh, directions, 
yeah. Uh, so we don't really like hire full-time writer, uh, but I, I know some companies they do. Um, they basically look at the the uh, uh, whether this writer have a lot of experience of uh, 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 interest in the gaming, and then also of course their creativity is important and storytelling. Yeah. Okay. Apart from this, I also realized that the uh, like uh, background music, audio part also contribute. Yeah. It, Kind yes. of important component. So, what about this aspect? Um, so, we actually outsource our audio. Okay. Okay. Uh, so everything that we develop in house, like almost hundred percent, except uh, sound effects and audio. Yeah, because okay. uh, you know, yeah, we 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 only develop like one to two games per year. Uh, one one half year to two years, and we cannot afford someone to sit there. You know, uh, we, because we we. Uh, our company we do not provide like outsource service, so we don't take any uh like you know sub, uh, project from other company. So we only develop our own IP. So it make more sense for us to actually um outsource the the uh, sound effects and music, and also um it's more flexible because it depends on the game and then who can provide better uh, uh sound or uh price of course uh, budget for the project. You know yeah. Uh, the reason I ask this question is because uh, under our computer games degree program, mm. uh, there's one module is uh, audio uh, in games. So we have to uh, request the student to build up uh, uh, the video, or oh, sorry, audio mixing uh, to support mm -hmm. the, the games. But uh, uh, again, uh, it has to depend on the company how, how uh, the requirement that fit into the game design itself. Okay, another aspect that I also would like to know, uh, because nowadays uh, security is uh, one of the most important thing in a, in any kind of application, including games. Uh. so right. how how your company actually tighten up in this aspect uh, from from the perspective of uh, cyber security? Because sometimes uh, game data is kind of a uh, Critical. Uh, yeah. We don't want yes. the user to violate it. Okay. So mm. how how yeah, your yeah. company actually handle it in this aspect? Um, I think when we started, we don't even handle them, right? So uh, there are a lot of privacy and all that, and then uh, especially when we do a a freemium game, people just crack the game and then get the free coin. You know, they don't pay, and uh, not until like uh three years ago when we developed a uh, crack ball. So. The data basically is all server based, right? So, uh, uh, and and then our server or data uh, is on AWS. Uh, of course, in terms of technical, technical ones, I cannot speak for my CTO or my programmer, right? So, uh, all the data actually from server. So there's no way they can actually mon manipulate the data. Uh, so we don't store anything on client side. Means the on the phone. The moment you store a data on phone, people can actually uh, alter it, and then uh, then they'll get all kind of things, right? So uh, all the game that we develop today, um, data is all from server, uh, and so also we have anti uh, anti cheat. Um, so the game that we develop, we have uh, some measurements. Uh, so uh, for example, for example, right? So you are level one, and let's say when you advance to level two, that's impossible for you to get certain thing, right? Let's say ten thousand coin no matter or, or 10,000 experience, no matter how hard you work, right? Uh, unless you buy, right, some coin and all that. But if you don't, it's impossible for you to earn that uh, much economy. So we, our system will check. Uh, if certain criteria doesn't meet, it will ban the user. Yeah, okay. so it happens. Yeah, it happens. So uh, uh, um, uh, fun fact, we have one player actually uh, and write to us and say, uh, please, uh, I just got banned and uh, sorry, I, I know I cheated. Uh, so I please, you know, reactive my account. I, I, I promise I won't be cheated again. I won't be cheating in the game again. So so it happened to us actually. Yeah. Okay. Uh, one more question now. This question actually, uh, I want to ask on behalf of the parents. La. Yes. Because uh, yes. to be honest, la, uh, game development uh, as a degree program, Parents might actually kind of like a uh, bit suspicious uh, what mm. they can actually do after they graduate. I can see from just now your presentation, they have uh, uh, different types of the, 
the profession okay how can we actually convince the parent so that they can actually go into this industry uh i think if you ask me right every industry they have cons and pro right and then you can succeed in any industry yeah. right and you can fail in any industry right uh so for gaming industry if you look at it uh the data that I just show they're bigger than music so well it's better than musicians <laughs> so it's bigger than uh, music it's bigger than uh the movie industry so it means you have more opportunity there are more demands right yes. of course same time you're so uh, more competitive right so i cannot say whether this is a good industry i think the end of the day is yeah, you have to uh, pick something that you passionate and you like. It's important, right? So yeah, I know like oh, a lawyer make a lot of money, and if you really, really have no interest, and do you want to force yourself, you know, get into that business or industry, right? So I think that is very important, right? Uh, okay. So uh, that's how I look at it. Uh, but in terms of the industry wise, I think uh, opportunities there uh yeah i think opportunity there all right uh okay i don't have any question maybe uh colin can you actually get some uh, feedback questions from the public yes sure thank you for your service okay. yeah we will have a question from our audience uh, can you speak louder we cannot hear you okay there's one question from uh, tiffany okay uh it says uh, does the career prospect of the game development in in this uh period of covid 19 will actually affect or, or anything uh no it actually helps uh, the industry a lot all right so if you look i think you can uh, i don't have the data here but you can just google uh, gaming industry during covid pandemic right so the whole gaming industry actually grow faster and uh, uh, a lot faster um in fact because mainly because people you know stay home and play games right? oh, yeah. um yeah so uh, so that create a lot of demand uh i mean big player bigger game they actually have uh, they see uh, big increments on the daily active user and also revenue. But for us, you know, smaller company, probably we don't rasa lah, tak rasa lah, okay? But of yeah. course, uh, for us, we still doing okay uh, in terms of, because all the work that we've done, all digital, and the whole system that we have, uh, uh, our pipeline is all online. So we can actually work from home, uh, no issues. Uh, the challenge is uh, the communication and also, of course, you know, it will affect the progress. I mean, the development timeline a bit here and there. Uh, yeah, but otherwise, I think uh, game industry is doing great uh, during this pandemic. Okay. All right. We have next question. Uh, the next question comes from Lee Witz. How about game streaming such as uh, Stadia? Uh, do APU or Malaysia companies have that kind of research? I think that's question more to you. <laughs> uh, I don't actually get to know this game. Uh, uh, maybe APU, uh, uh, I'll come back. Okay. Yeah, I think I think for us because we we only develop games or develop IP leverage on the technology or leverage on you know the uh, some of the uh, technology out there so we don't really like uh in when like stadia uh and all that uh so so if one day the technology is available to us and uh it makes sense for us to get into that business using that platform then we will do it right so but for us we only focus on the uh the ip or the content right so that's what we develop Right, so the, uh, we develop content and then we just leverage on the technologies. Yeah. All right. Can we have a next question? Okay, is this one come from Edwin Chan? Many parents are quite skeptical about uh, the computer game study. I think this question I already asked. Yes. The, what is the advice for the parent in terms of uh, opportunity? Can maybe 
Mr. Desmond, Aero, elaborate a little bit more? Yeah, I think uh, in terms of opportunity wise, I think uh, there, there are a lot of demand, uh, especially in certain area, but not all, I would say. Um, for example, um, of course, there are some positions is very niche and very hard to find. Like game designer is very hard to find, uh, especially good one. So you can uh, study game design uh, and there are jobs out there, but, but, right? So there are not many demand in Malaysia uh, because game design, uh, for example, the, the studio, the big studio that I just show, uh, share with you guys, uh, international studio and big other studio, uh, big studios like Lemon Sky and all that, that so far they don't really focus on their IP. So they are the uh, outsource company. So there are a lot of demand on uh, artists, uh, 2D artists, 3D artists, and uh, programmers, uh, game programmers, uh, and many other as well. Yeah, I think uh, definitely there are a lot of opportunities. Yeah. Okay. Can we have next question? Okay, this one comes from uh, Dennis. Uh, How has the industry grow in Malaysia recently? Recently, uh, tough question. Uh, right? Yeah, because I think this one, uh, I can share a few slides yeah. later uh, with you okay. guys. Uh, some data from MTEC. Uh, so like okay. I say, if you go to the uh, level up dot uh, mine, I think there are some data there. And also MDEC provides some statistics uh, how Malaysia's gaming industry growing. But, uh, but from what I can tell in terms of the uh, opportunity development wise, there are more company uh, coming up. There are more international studios uh, like Sony uh, uh, PlayStation just uh, uh, came, came in Malaysia last year and currently they're actively hiring. Uh, there are a few other studios uh, uh, active hiring as well. So I think, of course, it's growing very fast. Yes. Okay. Can we have uh, other questions? We have a last question here. Okay. Okay. This one come from again from Adrian. Uh, what is the salary range for of a fresh graduate as a game programmer? Uh, I think fresh graduate now uh, it should range from two, two, two to three thousand. Okay. Yeah. Uh, that's fresh graduate. Uh, depends on it's you know the ICT industry. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty standard, I think. Uh, so it all depends on your skill. Uh, so we like you know with six month, one year experience, and it all really depends on your skill. So like say just now, uh, uh, you know you can be success in any industry if you have the skill. Right, yeah. and you can fill in any industry as well if you don't have the skill. <laughs> All right. So yeah, okay. but in yeah, mm -hmm. but I say uh, in the fresh grads, uh, I think ICT similar to game programmer. I think uh, it's like say two thousand to three thousand ranging. Yeah. Okay. Is there any more? Right. Yeah. So far, that's all for our Q and A from the audience. Yes. Okay. So uh, I would like to conclude uh, the session. So uh, thank you very much, uh, Desmond, uh, to join with us in this wonderful evening for the web webinar session. And thanks again, uh, Colin, uh, to moderate this session. So I hope uh, everyone stay safe and stay healthy. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Have a nice All right. Day. Thank you very much. Yep. Bye bye.